Apollo 17 was the final mission of NASA's Apollo program, the most recent time humans have set foot on the moon or traveled beyond low Earth orbit. Schmidt was the only professional geologist to land on the moon. He was selected in place of Joe Engel, as NASA had been under pressure to send a scientist to the moon. The mission's heavy emphasis on science meant the inclusion of a number of new experiments, including a biological experiment containing five mice that was carried in the command module. Mission planners had two primary goals in deciding on the landing site, to sample lunar highland material older than that at Mare Imbrium and to investigate the possibility of relatively recent volcanic activity. Since all three crew members had backed up previous Apollo lunar missions, they were familiar with the Apollo spacecraft and had had more time for geology training. Launched at 12.33 a.m. Eastern Standard Time on December 7, 1972, following the only launch pad delay in the course of the whole Apollo program that was caused by a hardware problem, Apollo 17 was a J-type mission that included three days on the lunar surface, expanded scientific capability, and the use of the third lunar roving vehicle. Cernan and Schmidt landed in the Taurus Litro Valley, completed three moonwalks, took lunar samples and deployed scientific instruments. Evans remained in lunar orbit in the command and service module, taking scientific measurements and photographs. The mission broke several records for crewed spaceflight, including the longest crewed lunar landing mission, greatest distance from a spacecraft during an extravehicular activity of any type, longest total duration of lunar surface extravehicular activities, largest lunar sample return, longest time in lunar orbit, and greatest number of lunar orbits. In 1969, NASA announced that the backup crew of Apollo 14 would be Gene Cernan, Ronald Evans, and former X-15 pilot Joe Engel. This put them in line to be the prime crew of Apollo 17, because the Apollo program's crew rotation generally meant that a backup crew would fly as prime crew three missions later. Harrison Schmidt, who was a professional geologist as well as an astronaut, had served on the backup crew of Apollo 15, and thus, because of the rotation, would have been due to fly as lunar module pilot on Apollo 18. In September 1970, the plan to launch Apollo 18 was cancelled. The scientific community pressed NASA to assign a geologist, rather than a pilot with non-professional geological training, to an Apollo landing. NASA subsequently assigned Schmidt to Apollo 17 as the lunar module pilot. NASA's director of flight crew operations, Dickie Slayton, was left with the question of who would fill the two other Apollo 17 slots, the rest of the Apollo 15 backup crew, or Cernan and Evans from the Apollo 14 backup crew. Support at NASA for assigning Cernan was not unanimous. Cernan had crashed a Bell 47G helicopter into the Indian River near Cape Kennedy during a training exercise in January 1971. The accident was later attributed to pilot error, as Cernan had misjudged his altitude before crashing into the water. Jim McDivitt, who was manager of the Apollo spacecraft program office at the time, objected to Cernan's selection because of this accident, but Slayton dismissed the concern. After Cernan was offered command of the mission, he advocated for Engel to fly with him on the mission, but it was made clear to him that Schmidt would be assigned instead, with or without Cernan, so he acquiesced. The prime crew of Apollo 17 was publicly announced on August 13, 1971. When assigned to Apollo 17, Cernan was a 38-year-old captain in the United States Navy, he had been selected in the third group of astronauts in 1963, and flown as pilot of Gemini 9A in 1966 and as lunar module pilot of Apollo 10 in 1969 before he served on Apollo 14's backup crew. Evans, 39 years old when assigned to Apollo 17, had been selected as part of the fifth group of astronauts in 1966, and had been a lieutenant commander in the United States Navy. Schmidt, a civilian, was 37 years old when assigned Apollo 17, had a doctorate in geology from Harvard University, and had been selected in the fourth group of astronauts in 1965. For the backup crews of Apollo 16 and 17, the final Apollo lunar missions, NASA selected astronauts who had already flown Apollo lunar missions, to take advantage of their experience, and avoid investing time and money in training rookies who would be unlikely to ever fly an Apollo mission. The original backup crew for Apollo 17, announced at the same time as the prime crew, was the crew of Apollo 15, David Scott as commander, Alfred Worden as CMP and James Irwin as LMP, but in May 1972 they were removed from the backup crew because of their roles in an incident known as the Apollo 15 Postal Covers Incident. They were replaced with the landing crew of Apollo 16, John W. Young as backup crew commander, Charles Duke as LMP, and Apollo 14 CMP, Stuart Rusa. Originally, Apollo 16 CMP, 
Ken Mattingly, was to be assigned along with his crewmates, but he declined so he could spend more time with his family, his son having just been born, and instead took an assignment to the space shuttle program. For the Apollo program, in addition to the prime and backup crews that had been used in the Mercury and Gemini programs, NASA assigned a third crew of astronauts, known as the support crew. Their role was to provide any assistance in preparing for the missions that the missions director assigned then. Preparations took place in meetings at facilities across the US and sometimes needed a member of the flight crew to attend them. Because McDivitt was concerned that problems could be created if a prime or backup crew member was unable to attend a meeting, Slayton created the support crews to ensure that someone would be able to attend in their stead. Usually low in seniority, they also assembled the mission's rules, flight plan and checklists, and kept them updated. For Apollo 17, they were Robert F. Overmere, Robert A. Parker and C. Gordon Fullerton. The insignia's most prominent feature is an image of the Greek sun god Apollo backdrop by a rendering of an American eagle, the red bars on the eagle mirroring those on the U.S. flag. Three white stars above the red bars represent the three crew members of the mission. The insignia includes, along with the colors of the U.S. flag, the color gold, representative of a golden age of spaceflight that was to begin with Apollo 17. The image of Apollo in the mission insignia is a rendering of the Apollo Belvedere sculpture in the Vatican Museums. The insignia was designed by artist Robert McCall, based on ideas from the crew. In deciding the call signs for the command module and lunar module, the crew wished to pay tribute to the American public for their support of the Apollo program, and to the mission, and wanted names with a tradition within American history. According to Cernan, this evoked the 19th century sailing ships which were given that name, and was a thank you to the people of the United States. The crew selected the name, Challenger, for the LM in lieu of an alternative, Heritage. Prior to the cancellation of Apollo 18 through 20, Apollo 17 was slated to launch in September 1971 as part of NASA's tentative launch schedule set forth in 1969. The in-flight aboard of Apollo 13 and the resulting modifications to the Apollo spacecraft delayed subsequent missions. Following the cancellation of Apollo 20 in early 1970, NASA decided there would be no more than two Apollo missions per year. Part of the reason Apollo 17 was scheduled for December 1972 was to make it fall after the presidential election in November, ensuring that if there was a disaster, it would have no effect on President Richard Nixon's re-election campaign. Nixon had been deeply concerned about the Apollo 13 astronauts, and, fearing another mission in crisis as he ran for re-election, initially decided to omit the funds for Apollo 17 from the budget, he was persuaded to accept a December 1972 date for the mission. Like Apollo 15 and 16, Apollo 17 was slated to be a J mission, an Apollo mission type that featured lunar surface stays of three days, higher scientific capability, and the usage of the lunar roving vehicle. Since Apollo 17 was to be the final lunar landing of the Apollo program, high-priority landing sites that had not been visited previously were given consideration for potential exploration. A landing in the crater Copernicus was rejected because Apollo 12 had already obtained samples from that impact, and three other Apollo expeditions had already visited the vicinity of Mare Imbrium, near the rim of which Copernicus is located. The lunar highlands near the crater Tycho were rejected because of the rough terrain that the astronauts would encounter there. A site on the lunar far side in the crater Tsiolkovsky was rejected due to technical considerations and the operational costs of maintaining communication with Earth during surface operations.